On the coast of the Black Sea, the Danube River forms one of the most valuable wetlands in the world. The Danube Delta is a maze of lakes and channels covering over one million acres in Ukraine and Romania. The Delta contains the largest reed beds in the world. In 1999, the UN designated the Ukrainian Danube Delta a biosphere reserve. The time I first came here, this place looked like a fairy tale, like a miracle. After we learned about the plans of the Ukrainian government to start the construction of the canal, it really inspired me to struggle to protect this place for the future generation. In 2002, Olya Melon became a staff lawyer for Environment People Law, or EPL, one of the first public interest organizations in Ukraine. Two years later, without any public notice, the Ukrainian government began phase one dredging in the Bistra Canal. By choosing this location for the Danube Black Sea shipping canal, the government ignored alternative locations that would have been far less damaging to the reserve's fragile ecosystem. This action was in direct violation of Ukrainian law and international agreements protecting the Danube Delta. Still in her early 20s and with no trial experience, Olya volunteered to take on the case. The government of Ukraine decided to build the canal for economic reason. Our organization took the case uh, not because uh, we were against the development. We wanted to, to pursue the sustainable development. When any organization takes such a case, it certainly involves financial and political risks. But finally we thought, if we don't take the case, who does it? And it was obvious that we need someone who will be pushing other people, who will be inspiring other people and who will be really working hard. I think this reserve got very lucky when the door to my office opened and quietly Olya and Andriy walked in. And I remember thinking, how can these people ever help us fight those monsters? I was stunned by their decision to take the Ukrainian government to court. They didn't have that old Soviet dogma hanging over their heads, didn't have that fear of the KGB or any possible government repression. By 2005, Olya had been to court more than 30 times. Her systematic legal approach to the case and her unflagging persistence took the government's legal team by surprise. They completely underestimated the professional abilities of a 25-year-old woman. For two years, Olya challenged government lawyers and ministers who used scare tactics against her and her clients. She was publicly called a traitor and a Romanian spy. I was aware that very high officials were involved in this uh, canal construction, meaning the Ministry of Transport, the former president of Ukraine, and uh, they were pressing the governmental officials to take positive decision, and the judges were told to allow the canal construction. Facing setbacks in the courts, Olya created an additional strategy to pressure the government. She knew that Ukraine was bound by numerous environmental conventions. EPL filed complaints with two of these conventions to force the Ukrainian government to justify its actions at a time when it was seeking acceptance from the European Union. The first significant victory took place when the court declared illegal the environmental impact statement. The judge was a very brave one. He really went deep into the details of the case. He really went through all of the environmental legislation of Ukraine, even citing the International Convention. Olya's efforts led to the suspension of phase one dredging at the Bistra Canal. It was a huge victory for the NGO community. In the midst of the case, the Orange Revolution in Ukraine was building momentum for government reform. When Viktor Yushchenko was swept into power in 2004, Ukrainians really believed the change would come. Olya and her colleagues and the other people that were fighting against the Pistoria really do symbolize the whole spirit of the Orange Revolution in terms of wanting truth, wanting openness, and wanting to see an end to corruption. The fight is not over yet. President Yushchenko still wants to continue the canal construction for the economic interests of Ukraine. And that's why we are hoping that the new government will help in our legal work and bring the rule of law in our country. For outstanding environmental achievement in Europe, the 2006 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Olya Melon, Lviv, Ukraine. <laughs>